can we start yes sir please sir okay so i hope uh, all of you are there so we are going to begin uh, with the examples that we had started so yesterday i had taken a few examples on lolp and lole so we'll take a few more examples and keeping in mind the time constraint that we have we'll try to move fast so let's take an example where you have a generation profile which is uh, which is two units 30 megawatt each and with the failure rate and the repair rate provided and uh, so that means you already know the availability or the probabilities of uh, being operational so that's 80 percent you know you use these figures to calculate mu by lambda plus mu will give you the availability lambda by lambda plus mu will give you the unavailability so you have the availability and the unavailability and this is the load profile that means 30 percent of the time the daily peak load is 50 megawatt 40 percent it is 40 megawatt 20 percent is 30 megawatt and 10 percent of the time it's 20 megawatt so we have the generation profile as well as the load profile and we need to find out the loss of load priority what is the priority that the load will be lost you know this is the profile it's not a constant uh, value it uh, uh, you know it varies from 20 to 50 peak load so let's build up the generation profile copt capacity outage priority table so that means uh, as and when the generators are out what is the remaining capacity and what are their probabilities that's what we need to find out. so when when the capacity is zero that means all of them both of them are out so you know the unavailability is 0.2 so it means that both of them are out so unavailability is 0.2 into 0.2 so that's 0.24 when when the availability is when the capacity is 30 that means one of them is out that one 30 megawatt is available another 30 megawatt is not available so therefore the availability you know is 0.8 and then the unavailability is 0 0.04 so one is available one is not available so 0.8 multiplied by 0 0.04 so that gives you uh, <clears throat> that gives you uh, not 0 0.04 sorry unavailability you see is 0 0.2 and the availability is 0 0.8 okay so that gives you 0 0.16 but it could be for example if it is a and b so b is out a is available a is out b is available so there are two such combinations possible so 0 0.16 plus 0 0.16 gives you 0 0.32. Then capacity in, both of them are in. So 0 0.8 into 0 0.8, 0 0.64. Okay. So this is the capacity outage priority table. Now we need to calculate the LOLP and we know the load profile. <clears throat> so you have three stages of generating capacity 0, 30 and 60. So let's see what happens when uh, capacity is 60. Is there any chance that the load will be able to exceed the capacity? No. Why? Because the load profile itself shows that it's from ranging from 20 to 50. So there is no way the load can exceed the capacity. And therefore the LOLP is zero. You know the, uh, you know the relationship, isn't it? Between LOLP and uh, the, <clears throat> you need to multiply the, state probabilities the priorities of experiencing certain capacities and priority that the load can exceed the capacity okay so here the load cannot exceed the capacity when the capacity is 60 therefore the lolp is zero when capacity is 30 then the probability is 0 0.32 so let's take that 0 0.32 so what is the priority that the load will be able to exceed the capacity load is you know when uh, when it is 30 the when the uh, when the uh, when the capacity is 30 that means 40 will be lost and 50 will be lost 
these so that's uh, 30 percent of the time and that's 40 percent of the time so 70 percent of the time so 70 percent means 0.7 priority that the load will exceed the capacity, 0.7. So you multiply the state uh, probability, the generation state probability of having 30 megawatt. So that's 0.7, uh, that's 0.32 multiplied by 0.7. So this is the LOL. Now, what about when the capacity is zero? That means everything will be lost. And what's the probability of having zero? That's uh, 0 0.04, 0 0.04. And therefore, uh, what is the priority that the load will be lost? You know, what is the priority that the load will be greater than capacity? So that's one, you know, 100%. So the capacity is zero, the entire load will be lost. So that's priority of the state probability multiplied by the priority that the load is greater than the capacity. So that's 0 0.04. So these are the three states and these are the LOLPs corresponding to it. One is zero, one is 0.224, and one is 0 0.04. Given that all these situations can exist either 0, 30, or 60. So what is the LOLP? So that's two point. You sum all these LOLPs, you get 0.264, okay? So how many days in a year? Just simply multiply by 365. You get 0.9636 days in a year. So this is the way you can find out the LOLP. Let's take yet another example, you know, simple example. Generation has five units, 40 megawatt each with a forced outage rate of 0.01. Load varies from 100% peak to 40% peak as a straight line. And system peak is 160 megawatt. You are generating 200 megawatt and load has, can have a peak of 160, but it varies, you know, it's a, uh, it's a linear relationship. So 40% of the peak means 64. 40 into 160, uh, that is 64 megawatt. So the load varies from 64 megawatt to 160 megawatt. And you need to find out the LOL. Slightly different kind of problem. So first, as in all uh, examples, let's find out the COPT. Okay, so this is the COPT. So uh, how many generators are there? Five generators are there and 40 megawatt each. So you can, of course, begin with 0, 40, 80, 120, 160, 100, 200. I mean, the other situations can be there. The only reason why we have neglected them here, you know, the, uh, the reason is that their probabilities are so low. As you can see here, the probabilities are. Uh, you know, uh, the probabilities are so low that we have really ignored them. It's less than 10 to the power minus 8. So those have been actually ignored. So capacity out up to 120 we have considered. 160 out and 200 out are not considered. You can consider them. It's not going to make any difference in the calculation of LOLP. Because these probabilities anyway would have to be used, would have to be multiplied by those uh, load exceeding the capacity. So these priorities are so low. So uh, beyond uh, uh, beyond 120 out, 160 and 200 out are 10 to the power minus eight and so on. So it's not really going to make a difference. And therefore we have ignored it. You know how these can be calculated? You know, you use that, uh, what is that binomial expression? You see, binomial expression, all the combinations, then, uh, you know, the unavailability multiplied, uh, taken uh, uh, multiple times. And then, you know, the number which are working, you multiply the availabilities. Those that are not working, you multiply their unavailabilities and take the number of combinations and that's the priority expression. Okay. So you have these calculations and this is a cumulative. This is a cumulative. That means from zero to 80, you have added them because they are all in eight places, nine places of decimals. So they won't really matter. This is already in the sixth decimal place, okay? So uh, the, we are finding out the cumulative. Actually, the cumulative should add up to one, but because we have ignored some of those terms uh, for convenience sake and for not trying to make it look very cumbersome and you know having too many entries, 
So it totals up to 0 0.99902. Otherwise, it would total up to 1. Okay, so this is the COPT. Now, what about the load variation curve? You know, load variation curve, as I said, varies from the minimum is 64. It goes up to 160. So this is 100% of the time. Now you have situations in which the the uh, the capacity is 80, capacity is 120, and capacity is 40, and so on. So uh, let's take this when the you know the load is varying from 64 to 160. So but we have capacities where you have 80 and 120 and 40. So let's see what happens when the load is more than 80 and the load is more than 120 okay so let's see so when the load is uh, when the load is uh, because you have capacity states of 80 so let's look at 80 for example so when the how long is the load uh, greater than 80 that means varies between 80 to 160 if the capacity is 80 and the load is in between 80 to 160 there will be outage there'll be no load which will be serviced. So this is, you know, according to this uh, linear expression, linear uh, uh, expression of straight line, you can calculate this. This comes out to be 83.4%. Like this, when you have a state of 120, it would be 41.7%. Now, what about zero? What about zero? When the capacity is zero or the capacity is uh, uh, when the capacity out is uh, when the capacity is uh, zero then out is zero that means you have 200 you had 200 you had 200 so no load is out percentage of time outage capacity will cause loss of load when uh, capacity out is 40 so that means 160 so the peak load is 160 and therefore no load will be out so what happens uh, when uh, when the when the capacity out is 80 you will lose 41.7 percent uh, times of the load likewise 120 you lose 83.40. So what is the LOLP? So the probability of existing in this state, you know, uh, when capacity out is 0 or 40 or 80 or 120. So we multiply these by those percentages, uh, you know, which we have calculated for the various states, uh, the load exceeding those various states. So you have capacity out 0, so you have uh, so you have a probability you see uh, 0.950991 okay so there is no chance that the load will exceed 160 so this is zero at 160 also you have zero at 100 and uh, 120 you see it's uh, 120 that means capacity out is 80 so capacity in is 120 is 41.7 percent so that's uh, 0.417 and at 120 what is the probability 0 0.000971 so 0 0.00971 into 41.7 percent and then you have when capacity out is uh, 120 that means capacity in is 80 because capacity in 80 and 120 there will be loss of load so there is peak load of uh, 160 so you have 83.4 percent so you have 0.834 so you multiply and sum them up you get this multiply them by 365 you get 0.1505 days per year so this is the uh, this is the LOLP and when you want to get LOLE, you multiply it by 365 days as we have done everywhere else. So, so many days uh, in a year, there will be loss of load. Now, let's look at uh, another example. The COPT is given and the load profile is as follows. That means uh, 57 megawatt 
peak, lo uh, peak load occurs 12 times, 52 uh, megawatt occurs 83 times, 46 megawatt occurs 107 times, 41 megawatt occurs 116 times, 34 megawatt occurs 47 times. This is number of occurrences. Okay. So, and we have uh, the, then this is the COPT generation. You know, they have sim uh, what is given is the load profile and the COPT. That means you have generators from, uh, you know, you have say four generators, each of them 25 megawatt. So you have uh, varying possibilities from zero megawatt when everything fails, when one of them is working 25, when two of them is working 50, when three of them is working 75, when all four are working is 100. And then these probabilities have been calculated using those permutation combination. You remember using that binomial expression, the forced outage rates are not given, but it is assumed that there would be some value and because of which these probabilities can be calculated and these are the cumulative probabilities. That means you add this to this, that means, you know, uh, so you add this to this, this to this and everything together and uh, yeah, the cumulative probabilities seem to be more because probably all the possibilities have not been or all these calculations are not to the last decimal place or something and there is some error in the calculation probably that uh, this cannot be more than one so obviously there is some error some typo there so anyway these are the uh, probabilities which have been calculated and then you simply add them up and it gives you the cumulative probability, which should not be more than one in any case. And therefore, if there is some error here, it's primarily because of time. So uh, what is the loss of load expectation? So uh, 12 occurrences, 12 occurrences of 57 megawatt. So when do you have uh, loss of load? when the capacity is uh, less than uh, less than 75 so these three okay so these three possibilities will cause loss of load so so that means uh, the probability the cumulative probability you take the probability of this 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 add them up the cumulative probability is 0.20392 okay 0.20392 multiplied by the occurrence 12 okay then plus 83, that is 52. This will also cause a, lo cause a loss of load when the capacity is 0, 0.25, 50. So again, uh, the cumulative probability is 0 0.20392, so multiplied by 83. Then, uh, then you have uh, uh, 46. When will this uh, cause a loss of load? 46 will uh, cause a loss of load when it is 0 and 25. So the cumulative probability is 0 0.00792 multiplied by 107. It's not 108 type. Okay. Then uh, uh, 41, again, these same two. We have 0 0.00792 multiplied by 116. 0 0.00792 multiplied by 116 and then you have 34. So 34 means this will not cause a loss of load. Uh, yeah, capacity in 25 will cause a loss of load. So therefore, again, this cumulative probability, 50 is not going to cause a loss of load. So this again, cumulative probability multiplied by 47. So point triple zero seven nine two in all the three cases multiplied by 47 this is not 108 this is 107 typo so 2.151 days per year is the you multiply finally those values with 365 okay so just remember or uh, uh, yeah so these are not probabilities these are occurrences so you don't have to really uh, multiply them by 365 days in a year because these are occurrences over a year you know occurrences over a year so you some simply multiply them and then you get 2.151 days 
for your that's the loss of load expectation so uh, let's take another example a generation system consists of two units of capacities 20 and 30 megawatt unit post outage rate the mean time to repair is 20 days calculate the priority and frequency of failure of the system if it has to deliver a steady load of 25 megawatt here the load is steady there is no load profile you know you assume a steady load and then this is a generation profile generation profile that means the outage rates are already given even the repair rate is given post outage rate and the repair rate is given that you know, 20 days therefore the repair rate is 1 upon 20 and you know the availability and unavailability you know the availability and you know the unavailability and you know the repair rate therefore you can find out the failure rate okay for both of them these are the avail unavailability for 20 megawatt 0 0.05 is the unavailability for 30 megawatt and for both of them the repair is 20 days and therefore you can find out the failure rate corresponding to each of them and then we proceed okay so uh, repair rate you know for each of them both for 20 and 30 is 20 days so mttr is 20 days so repair rate is 1 upon 20 so we substitute in the expression of our unavailability you see the post outage rate is 0 0.15 and 0 0.05 for 20 megawatt is 0 0.1 so we substitute the first uh, the repair rate in the first outage rate that's lambda by lambda plus mu and you get uh, the failure rate as 0 0.0555 and of course the availability is 0 0.9 because the unavailability is 0 0.1 let's look at the other case so here now you already have the first out the uh, the transitions to the transitions to higher state and lower state lower state means failure rate higher state means repair rate so we have already calculated for uh, 20 megawatt unit and for 30 megawatt unit the availability is uh, the unavailability is 0 0.05 and therefore the availability is 95 percent and since you know the repair rate which is 0 0.05 you can find out what is the failure rate which is 0 0.002632 you substitute in this expression and you get it. so now you have the capacity outage priority table in the capacity outage priority table no big deal zero in that means 20 megawatt has failed and 30 megawatt has failed, isn't it two units 20 and 30 so 20 has failed and 30 has failed so what is the probability 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.05 so that's 0 0.005 okay and then what is the transition to a uh, lower rate is there any lower rate no zero and what is the transition to a higher rate uh, transition to a higher state lower state than zero nothing so it's zero so uh, what is the transition to a higher state it could be 20 it could be 30 now uh, transition to a uh, uh, state 20 that means uh, repair rate of point isn't it when it is capacity is zero and you repair it can come back to 20 or it can come back to 30. so the repair rate is 0 0.05 for 20 and 0 0.05 for 30 you know both of them are same so 0 0.05 0 0.05 you sum them up you get uh, 0.1 you see two transition two uh, possibilities 1 to 20 and 1 to 30 so that's uh, from 0 you can uh, you can go back either to 20 megawatt or to 30 megawatt by repairs so the sum of them is 0.1 and uh, to zero state nothing is possible then from uh, capacity in 20 capacity in 20 so uh, that means 30 is not working so 30 is not working its unavailability is 0 0.05 availability is uh, uh, 20 is uh, in so availability is 0.95 so 20 in 30 out that means 0 0.045 calculation okay multiplication of the probabilities now what about transition to a lower state lower state can only be to zero 
that is the failure rate of 20 20 megawatt unit. so that's 0 0.00555 okay then what about transition to a higher state transition to a higher state from 20 it will not go to 30 of course from 20 it will go to from 20 it will go to uh, the transition can be to a state of 50 isn't it transition can be to a state of 50 so that means uh, uh, the repair the repair of 20 you know the repair of 20 that means 30 is uh, uh, from capacity in 20 30 is not available so 20 if it gets repaired the repair rate is 0 0.05 likewise for 30 you know 20 in uh, 30 in 20 out 20 out is 0 0.1 unavailability 13 is 0 0.95 availability therefore the probability is 0 0.095 and then uh, what is the failure rate from 30 it can go to zero so failure rate is 0 0.00 2632 0 0.2000232 and then it can get repaired and then it moves to a higher state so 0 0.05 that's repair rate and 50 that means 20 is in 30 is in so multiply the availabilities and you get this figure and then what is the possibility it can go to a lower state it can go either to 20 or it can go to 30 so there are two failure rates which you need to add them up, isn't it? From 50, it can go either to 20 or 30. Those are lower states. So the transition rates are these. So add them up. So it gives you 0.008187. What about higher state? None. Nothing more than 50. So this is lambda J minus and lambda J plus. So these are the transition rates associated with this. Uh, various capacities so let's look at something further you know what are we trying to find out in this problem uh, you know calculate the probability and frequency of failure that's the reason uh, that's the reason we have to be interested in knowing the transition rates because we need to find out the frequency of failures as well here we need to find out only the probabilities and the frequencies of failure so uh, when the uh, load is a steady state of 25 megawatts. So uh, now let's look at 25 megawatts. So which are the states which do not meet that when capacity is zero, which capacity is 20. So what is the probability 0 0.005, 0 0.045. So you add them up. So that gives you 0 0.005 and 0 0.045 gives you 0 0.05. What about the frequency of occurrence? Frequency of occurrence is, if you recall, you know, we have developed these expressions to find out the frequency. That means the probability of the state multiplied by the sum of the departures to a lower state and a higher state. So the probability of this state was 0 0.005, isn't it? Probability of being in state zero is 0 0.005. Then transition to a lower state, is zero transition to a higher state is one point one so some of these transitions multiplied by the probability will give you the frequency so some of these uh, transitions this is not uh, point one seven so this is not uh, point one seven this is simply zero plus zero point one it's a typo so 0.1 this 7 is not there so 0 0.005 multiplied by 0 0.1 gives you 0 0.0005 okay now what about the cumulative probability that means you want to find out uh, the the uh, what is the cumulative frequency that means it can fail due to uh, when 50 megawatt is there and 25 megawatt uh, is the load 30 megawatt is there 25 megawatt is the load 20 megawatt is there and 25 megawatt is load is there 0 megawatt and 25 megawatt load is there okay so uh, that you need to find out the cumulative frequency now cumulative frequency probably we haven't uh, touched much upon but uh, the, we without going into the mathematics what you need to do is you need to find out, for example, what is the cumulative 
frequency of uh, uh, what is the cumulative frequency of uh, failure you know cumulative frequency of failure so when uh, 25 megawatt load is there it would fail when zero capacity is there and 20 capacity is there so when zero and 20 capacity is there so you find out the frequency of failure due to zero we have already found out and then what is the uh, then the frequency of failure due to 20 and add them you know so here what we are doing is in the cumulative frequency expression what we do is the previous frequency which is which we have calculated as uh, 0 0.005 and then the next one okay the next one so while adding it sums up this way that you take the first frequency then take the state probability of the next state and then find out the difference not the summation because this is a cumulative uh, frequency and we are not going into the derivations of these uh, uh, functions so cumulative frequency is the previous frequency plus the state probability multiplied by the difference between the transition rates not plus this is another typo okay so you have 0 0.005 and the state probability 20 is 0.05 and then uh, this is the difference between the state uh, state transitions. So that's uh, uh, lambda two uh, plus uh, lambda. Uh, this lambda plus two is 0 0.05. Then minus 0 0.00555. So the difference between the transitions. And so that gives you 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. So you can find out the frequency of failure. You can find out the probabilities. You can find out the loss of load probability, LOLE, you know, loss of load expectation. Just simply multiply by 365 and you get the LOLE. And likewise, you can find out the frequencies as well. Now let's look at system with derated states. Two state systems, successor up. So these are some things which you already know. Use the binomial theorem to obtain the capacity outage probability table. So let's consider a generation plant with two 10 megawatt unit, each having a forced outage rate of 10%. That means probability is 90, you know, availability is 90, unavailability is 0.1, that's 10%. And two units, so you have uh, the various possibilities. That means either you can have zero megawatt, or you can have 10 megawatt or you can have 20 megawatts okay so what are the probabilities when zero that means both are unavailable so 0.1 into 0.1 you know point uh, uh, point zero one uh, one is uh, one is uh, unavailable and the, the second one is also unavailable and uh, therefore <coughs> Capacity, uh, when uh, 20 megawatt, both of them are out, then therefore the probability will be 0 0.01 because first is unavailable, second is unavailable. And therefore you simply multiply them and you get the probability. When 10 megawatt, that means one is available, other is not available. So that is, uh, and there are two possibilities, A and B. So A is available, B is not available. B is available, A is not available. So two such combinations. So, uh, a is available, B is not available. 0.9 into 0.1 and two such possibilities. Therefore, you get 0.18. And then uh, both of them are uh, available. That's zero capacity out. So 0 0.9 into 0 0.9. So that gives you 0 0.81. And the cumulative probability, of course, will uh, all total up to one. So you simply take this probability, this probability, and uh, yeah. So you take these probabilities and you add them up and it will give you one. You take this probability, take this probability, this is the probability here. And then take these three, this is the probability here. So if the generation plant operates a supply of 15 megawatt load, what is the probability of loss of load? 15 megawatt load, that means if the capacity is 10 and zero, it will not be able to meet it. Therefore, you simply have to take the uh, uh, probabilities, you know, probabilities, 0.818 and 0.01. So 15 megawatt load. So if these two possibilities exist, 
then uh, 15 megawatt lo load will not be serviced. So sum them up, so that gives you the LOLP. So uh, expected number of days of load loss multiplied by 365, so 69.35 days in a year. So uh, then again, this is yet another, you know, consider a generation plant with two taken 10 megawatt unit, each having a forced outage rate of 10%. If the generation plant operates a supply of 15 megawatt, what is the expected load loss? So we have already calculated this, you know, uh, uh, capacity outage priority table. Let's calculate the load loss. When 20 megawatt is there, then and 15 megawatt is the load, what is the loss of load? Zero. When 10 megawatt uh, generation is there, 15 megawatt load is there. So load loss is five. When zero megawatt is there and 15 megawatt load is there, so uh, so load loss is 15. And what are the probabilities corresponding to 20? We have seen, you know, 0 0.81, 0 0.18, 0 0.01. These are the same probabilities. So these are the same probabilities. So load loss zero, load loss five. This is the probability. Load loss zero. This is the probability. Load loss 15. This is the probability. So you multiply them and you get these figures. 5 into 0 0.18, 0 0.9, 15 into 0 0.01, 0 0.15, 0 into 0 0.810. Sum them up, you get 1.05. So the expected load loss is 1.05. Expected load. It's not the number of days. You know, it's the load which is required. What is the load loss? So 1.05. Yet another example, a generation plant is to be designed to satisfy a constant 10 megawatt load. Four alternatives are being considered. 1 into 10, 2 into 10, 3 into 5, 3 into 3.33. The probability of unit failure is assumed to be this. Forced outage rate, therefore, is unavailability is 0.02. Availability, therefore, is 98%. And these, you know, you want to service a load of 10 megawatt and various combinations are being thought of. Just one is that use one generation unit with 10 megawatt, two generation unit of 10 megawatt, three generation of five megawatt each, three generation of 3.33. Now you want to look at the LOLP, LOLE, you know, for all uh, possibilities that we have discussed to figure out what could probably be the best in terms of the decision to deploy which combination. So one into 10 megawatts, so either you have zero or 10, you know, that means zero out or 10 out. So 10 in, zero in. So what is the availability? 0.98, the probability. And what is the probability here? 0 0.02. So cumulative probability, of course, is this. So what is the load loss? Uh, what is the LOLP? You know, so if you have a, if you have a 10 megawatt load, then, you'll lose load, you'll lose load when you generate zero. So that's 0 0.01. So the LOLP is 0 0.01. So LOLE is 365. You multiply that figure, you get 3.65 days in a year. Likewise, when you have two into 10 megawatt generation, so you have either you generate zero, either you generate zero or 10 or 20. Okay. So when you generate zero, that means both of them have failed. Okay, so you multiply the unavailabilities. When you generate 10, that means one of them has working, one of them other has failed. And two such possibilities. So you multiply the probabilities, you come to this. When you say 20, that means both of them are working. So you multiply the probabilities, you come to this. And these are the cumulative probabilities. You add this up to this and then to this, you get one. So what is the loss of load probability? When you have 10, when you have 10 megawatt, so you basically lose only when you generate 10. When you generate 10 and 20, you don't lose the load. Only when you generate zero, you lose the load. So the probability is 0 0.0004, okay? Corresponding to uh, zero, zero generation. So this is the LOLP. And then you multiply by 365, you get 0.15 days a year. So here you got 3.65, here you got 0.15. So when you have two into 10, what about three into five? So let's say, 
uh, what are the uh, what is the generation states 0 5 10 15 none of them are working 0 one of them is working 5 two of them are working 10 three of them are working 15 so uh, unavailability is you multiply them you get this and then one of them is working and two of them are not working one of them is working and two of them are not working so three such combinations so one of them is working you take the availability two of them are not working unavailability okay so a multiplied by the unavailability square and three such possibilities because one of them could work second third will not work second could work then third could work and the other two will not work okay so you get these probabilities you calculate and then these are the cumulative probabilities so when you have uh, when you have a, a load of uh, what is the load 10 megawatt load so when you have a load of uh, 10 megawatt when you have a load of 10 megawatt then you lose load when you generate zero and you lose load when you generate five not when you generate 10 and 15 so zero and five so these are the two probabilities so anyway you have to add them up so that's the rationale for using the cumulative probability so you add these two up you get 0 0.001184 so that's the loss of load probability multiply by 365 you get 0 0.33 next you have 4 into 3.33 megawatt okay so you are generating either 0 or 3.33 one generation one unit two unit and three okay three unit and four unit. So then these are the probabilities corresponding to each of them. That means you are generating zero. That means all of them have failed. So U4, your uh, one is working, three are not working, say A into unavailability cube and four such possibilities. Two are working, two are not working. Okay, A square and U square and six such possibilities. So multiplied by six. And here uh, three are working and one is not working. So if three are working and one is not working, four such combination. And all four are working, there is only one such combination. And here you are. This is the probability table, COPT. And you have 10 megawatt load. So you lose load when you generate zero. When you generate 3.33, when you generate 6.66, these are the cumulative probabilities. You add this up to this, you get this value. Then you add uh, the uh, these three, you get this value. So when you generate up to 6.66 megawatt, you lose because the load is 10 megawatt, and therefore this probability is the loss of load probability multiplied by 365. You get 0.85 dcs here. What is the expected load loss? You know, in various cases. So we have already found out the LOLP, LOLE for all these uh, combination, for all these, uh, you know, for all these uh, cases. Now we want to find out what is the expected load loss. So when you generate, uh, uh, when you just have one unit, so either uh, zero is in or 10 is in. So here the load loss when zero, uh, when zero is in, load loss is ten. When ten is in, zero lo load loss is zero. And what is the probability corresponding to it? You remember these possibilities, probabilities we have calculated earlier. So ten is 0 0.98, zero is 0 0.02. You know, so ten is 0 0.98, zero is 0 0.02. That's the availability and unavailability. Okay, so the load loss is zero multiplied by the probability it's zero and then 10 load loss is 10 multiplied by the probability is point from 0 0.02 you multiply you get 0 0.2 and therefore the load loss is 0 0.2 okay so you have 0 0.2 that means 200 uh, kilowatt is the expected load loss what is the load loss here so you have this table you know this is the same thing that we have done earlier 2 into 10 so these are the probabilities you know this is the cumulative probability so anyway we have taken the individual probabilities here we have taken the individual probabilities here for various states you know uh, in is 20 in is 10 in is 0 so these are the states and uh, corresponding probabilities 
So when you when the load is 10, you lose nothing here, you lose nothing here, and you lose 10 here. And the probability is 0 0.004. So you multiply uh, you multiply this load loss with the probability and you get 0 0.004. You know, there were three zeros earlier, now it's two zeros. So that's four kilowatt. Let's look at the other uh, case. So you have this uh, COPT and when the load is 10, so when do you lose load? When you generate zero, when you generate five, you lose load. You don't lose load when you generate 10 and 15. Okay, so how much of load do you lose? Uh, when you generate five, you lose five. When you generate zero, you lose 10 because the load is 10. And these are the probabilities. So what do I do? I multiply this probability and the load lost. So, and then, so for five, uh, when you generate five, you lose uh, five uh, megawatt. And therefore, uh, when you multiply it with the probability, it comes to this, then 10, because the probability of losing five is this much. And therefore, equivalent is 0 0.00588. And then 10, you lose this much. So you multiply them and you get sum these up to because these are the cases in which you lose load. So 0 0.00596, so that corresponds to 5.96 kilowatt. Likewise, in this case, you have 3.33, uh, 6.67, and 10. You know, when you uh, when you generate 6.67, 3.33, and 0, then you lose load. When you generate 10, you don't lose load. When you generate 13.33, you don't lose load. So how much of load is lost? 10 minus 6.67, 10 minus 3.3, and 10 minus 0. So these are the load losses, and these are the probabilities. So I multiply these combinations, and I get this, and then I sum them up. So I get 0.00789387. So, you know, you have truncated it, you need not, but you can truncate it. So that's megawatt. So 7.89 kilowatt is lost. So for the various cases, we know the LOLP, LOLE, and we know the expected load loss as well. So the comparative analysis, okay? So you can see uh, one into 10, you know, uh, let's say the investment cost is 10, 2 into 10 megawatt so per uh, unit of 10 megawatt investment cost you know some uh, let's say this was 10 and so therefore relative cost is 20 here the relative cost let's say is 15 you know let's say the cost per megawatt is 5 and therefore uh, cost per megawatt is 1 so uh, of generation so let's say 10 let's say 20 here and therefore 15 and 13.3 and uh, we look at the uh, loss of load expectation for the various cases uh, it was uh, yeah for the various cases so 3.65 0 0.15 0 0.43 0 0.85 you see the loss of load expectation days for me an expected load loss 200 4, 5.96, and 7.89, okay? And uh, so this is a table, you know, for a decision maker to take some decision. Cost is there, what will, uh, what will be the loss of load expectation days per year and expected load loss. And then, of course, you can also take in more reliable you know, because the availabilities are low, therefore LOLP is high, and therefore expected lo loss of load is high. So you can take different unavailabilities. Earlier, we have considered a case of uh, unavailability of uh, 0.022% and uh, 2%. And uh, you can also consider 4%, you can also consider 6% and calculate the expected load loss. At 2%, you know, this, this, these were the figures. 
and at 4% it could be some different figures and at 6% it could be at some different figures. So, uh, so you have all these tables for the decision maker to take some decisions. Okay, let's take another example. Uh, you know, these examples are just to make you quite familiar with these terms and, and know how to calculate them. So, uh, we are not going to go much into the theory involved so that otherwise you lose track of how to do some calculations. A pumping station, you know, this is not about power supply, but anyway, because this also helps you out. A pumping station has to include 20 tons per hour, each having an unavailability of 0.1. 1 into 30 ton per hour with an unavailability of 0.15, calculate the capacity outage priority table. So COPT is also what you can calculate, you know, it's similar to the generation, you know, the pumping. So you have 2 into tons per hour. So you have, you can either pump uh, 40 or 20 or 0, depending upon uh, you can pump either 0 or 20 or 40 depending upon whether it is available or not available. So for 40 tons per hour it is 90% into 90%, you know, outage rate is 0.1. So that's 0.81. And uh, so 20 is uh, two possibilities. One of them is out, the other is not out. And therefore 0.9 into 0.1 multiplied by 2, so it's 0.18. 40 uh, in is 0, therefore both of them are out. So 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.1. Let's take the other one, you know, 2 into 20 tons and then this is 1 into 30. So either it's there or it's not there. So capacity in is 30 and capacity out is 0. So the unavailability is 0.15. Here the unavailability is 0 0.8. Uh, here the unavailability is uh, 0.15 and therefore the availability is 0.85. How to combine these COPTs? You know, both of them you are using together. So this is one good uh, example to know how to combine the COPT, you know, because ultimately you are pumping, uh, you are doing the same thing. So you are pumping uh, water and therefore you have 220 ton per hour units and 130 ton per hour unit. So maximum you can pump 70. 2 into 20 and 130, so 70. And these are the uh, these are the numbers associated with it, you know, 40 tons, uh, you know, 0 0.81 probability, then uh, 20 tons, 0 0.18, and uh, 0 ton, 0 0.01. These are the probabilities which are associated with the 20 tons per hour, two units, and 30 tons, you know, you can pump uh, with probability of 0 0.85, 30 tons in, zero is 0 0.15. Now you want to combine them. You know, you know the probabilities with respect to the various capacities. That's capacity outage probability. Test. Now you want to combine them, 40 plus 30, you know, 70. So what you do when you add these capacities, you multiply the probabilities. You multiply the probabilities. So you get here. Okay, then 30 plus 20 will give you 50. So you multiply the probability 0.85 into 0.18. Then 30 plus 0, so you multiply the probability 0.85 into 0 0.01. So you get 30, uh, 0 0.085. Now let's look at, look at 20. Uh, let's look at uh, 40 and 0. So that means 40. So multiply these two probabilities. Then 20 and 0. So multiply these two probabilities, 0.15 into 0.18. Then uh, 0 and uh, 0, so 0 0.0015 you get 0 0.0015 because 0 0.01 multiplied by 0 0.15 is 0 0.0015. So you multiplied the probabilities. So one is individually and one is the combination. So likewise, what do you get? You get, you know, if you are using both of them, so both these two pumps together. So you have these possibilities of capacities. One is you could either have zero or you could have 20, you know, uh, because you had uh, 0, 20, 40, 2 into 20 tons. 
So you have 0, 20, and then 20 plus 10, you remember? Uh, no, not 20 plus 10, it's 30, okay? So you also have 0, 20, 30, then 40 is 210, 220 ton per hour uh, pumps. And then 50 is 120, one of them is 20, one of them is 30. 70 is one of them is uh, 30 and the other two of them are 20. So maximum you can get is 70, minimum you can get is uh, zero. So that's the capacity in this is the property. Okay, so this is a COPT, COPT. And if there is a particular requirement, then you can see what is the loss of, uh, so what is a, a loss of the requirement. You know, in the power supply parlance, loss of load quality, loss of load expectation, and so on. So these are combined COPT. So one way how to combine the, uh, you know, uh, the capacity outage priority table. If we have these similar units, you know, you have these similar units, multiplying those probabilities, adding those capacities, and so on. So I'm not going to discuss too much of all these theory. Uh, so we'll confine ourselves to calculations so that, uh, you know, we are spot on. So uh, let's move over to generation expansion planning using adequacy calculations. Using adequacy calculations. Uh, this is where we begin now. And so let's take a break of five minutes and be back. You can go to the washroom and uh, take some water and we'll be, be uh, we'll be back in another five minutes and we'll begin with generation expansion plan okay okay sir okay five minutes
Hello, can we begin? Can we begin? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, I had uh, I had uh, mentioned about some examples, and I had um, I had also done some comparison with various possibilities of generation, and what are the you know what are the LOLEs, LOLP, and what is the expected load loss. So uh, I'm not going to go much into the theory of generation expansion planning, but I would like to confine myself to all the calculations because that's the that's at the core of the problem. So you realize that there can be an increase in the load. You know, over a period of time, the load profile can change because in the uh, in the, in various residential and commercial areas, there is growth and expansion, and therefore there is a greater need for uh, more power, and therefore the generation uh, there has to be a plan for expansion. There has to be a plan for expansion to keep the LOLPs under control to keep the LOLEs under control and to keep the expected load loss under control. Because if there is no power supply, there is no development, there is no growth as well. And therefore, a lot of livelihood and a lot of life uh, in and around residential, commercial area depends upon uh, the power generation. And therefore, there has to be uh, planning how to expand the power supply and therefore the generation expansion planning using adequacy calculations. So we'll see some example and probably you can figure out um, most of the theory yourself. So there are so many things to tell related to this, but I'm going to confine myself to the calculations, how they are carried out and what can, which can become the basis for planning. So consider a system containing five uh, 40 megawatt unit with uh, forced outage rate of 0.01 and installed capacity is 200 megawatt. The capacity outage priority table is uh, what we can see. You know, 40 megawatt, five, table, five uh, generators. So installed capacity is 200. The capacity outage can be seen. You know, uh, the outage can go to 160, 200, but since those priorities are so small, therefore we have ignored them. But uh, 180 out means 18, 80 out means 120 in, 40 out means 116, zero out means 200 in, and these are the probabilities. So, so anything which is less than 10 to the power minus six has been neglected. And let's say the next year system load model is represented by the load shape. You know, we had taken an example earlier in which we had used a linear uh, load curve. So this is a linear approximation of an actual load shape curve. Note that the forecasted annual system peak load is 120 megawatt. Okay, so the peak load is 120. And so this is the demand, you know, there is up to 40 megawatt, you know, 365 days a year, uh, there is that demand. And then, uh, then beyond 40 to 120, you know, you have a linear representation and at uh, beyond 120, there is no demand, okay? So, so minimum is 40, maximum is 120. And there is a linear relationship between the two, okay? So this is the load profile and this is the generation profile. So uh, first we calculate the indices and then we decide about planning and so on. So, uh, these are the peak loads, you know, peak loads can, uh, here the peak load is not beyond 120, but uh, you can calculate with this profile and this profile, the generation profile and the load profile, what would be the LOLE. So the LOLE were calculated to be 0 0.002005 days per year, that uh, okay, 
that means in 498 years there would be one day uh, loss so uh, you know this is a peak load 120 now we need to calculate the LOLE so we are not uh, doing that calculation because we know how to do it and therefore we say that uh, the LOLE is 0 0.002005 and then we assume that this 120 would soon become 130, 140, 160 in the coming days, months or years and so on. So there is a growth in the system annual peak load. From 120, it can go even up to 200 because the maximum generation is 200 megawatt. So how will it influence the, uh, how will it influence the LOL, for example? So you see at 120, we have calculated it to be 0 0.002005. When the peak load becomes 130, then the, you know, then LOLE increases, you see. It was 0 0.002, now it has become 0 0.0472. Then if the peak load becomes 140, I was mentioning to you about there is a constant increase in the load requirement because of the development, because of the growth, because of the planning, because of the expansion, residential areas, commercial areas. So the peak loads can keep increasing. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the way in which the peak loads, for example, can increase, and this would lead to the change in the indices if the generation uh, if the generation uh, profile was kept same. That means in this particular case, five generators of 40 megawatt each. So this is how the LOLE would change. So when the peak load becomes 200, you can see six days in a year. For example, there will be loss of load if uh, peak load went up to 200. The peak load uh, uh, were 160, it would be 0.15. And then it suddenly increases quite a lot. Okay. So these are the these are the changes in the LOLE. So when ca one can actually uh, plot uh, LOLE versus the system peak load. See, the uh, system peak load varies you know, this is where we were, 120. This is where, where we were, 120 peak load. And this was the generation profile. We keep the generation profile same. That means 540 megawatt unit. That means generating up to 200 megawatt. So uh, this is the generation profile. And this is a peak load profile. But instead of 120, now it becomes 130, 140, 160, 180. Goes up to 200. Okay. So, uh, there is a growth in the load and therefore because of the growth in the load the LOLE has changed and therefore we plot the LOLE versus the system peak load so the peak load increases from 120 from where we were up to 200 and how the LOLE has changed yeah days per year so this is a kind of logarithmic scale so you can So you can see how the LOLE changes, peak load. And therefore, you don't want the LOLE to increase beyond a point. So you have some cutoff, you have some threshold. And therefore, what do you do? Because you cannot prevent the peak load from increasing. So if you do not do anything with the generation system, then obviously the, you cannot do anything with the LOLE. The peak load obviously is not under your control. But... LOLE, is it possible to control by changing the generation profile, adding more units, committing more units, unit commitment at certain intervals, okay? So when you add more units at certain intervals, say after one year or two year, two year and then next unit committed at fourth year or sixth year or whatever, then this LOLE profile can change. And when it can change, then probably it can uh, you know, it can maintain the levels that you are looking for. So you can have a threshold level, which is of course a management decision, which is not something which can be taken by uh, utility or, uh, you know, that decision is at the highest level, probably the government or, and then it can escalate to the utility and they basically decide what should be the threshold. Let's say that arbitrarily we select 0.15 days per year as the threshold risk level. So, and we forecast a 10% per year load growth. 
we have decided to add 50 megawatt unit at a time you know so we already have 200 megawatts uh, you know uh, 50 megawatt four units now we decide to add 50 megawatt with uh, post outage rate of 0.01 as the load grows and the risk increases you know we select 0.15 you see 0.15 so at 160 it has become 0.15 it has uh, it has become uh, you know when the load has increased from 120 as it becomes point uh, 160 the threshold level is crossed 0.15 so maybe it's a time to add one unit you know this is what is being implied so we have forecasted a 10 percent year uh, load growth and we add one unit at a time each with a post outage rate of 0.01 as the load grows in order to ensure the system satisfies the identified threshold risk level you know so the bottom line is that at every stage you keep calculating the LOLs. you have some software and you keep calculating so this is the way when you have 200 megawatt and this is the load profile you know from 100 to 200 or uh, you know this is the annual peak load. sorry not, this is a load profile annual peak load varying from 100 to 350 so you know uh, when you have 200 megawatt generation peak load of 100 megawatt then this is the lol then when it becomes 120 you know this is what we had calculated and mentioned earlier it becomes 0 0.002005 you know this is what we had mentioned over here so so at 120 peak load it's 0 0.002005 140 160 180 200 220 the peak load can keep increasing so uh, assume 10 percent growth in a year but uh, you know these are the possibilities and the calculation when you generate 200 megawatt then you escalate it to 250 then you escalate it to 300 then you escalate it to 350 you know because the load is growing and therefore the lol is uh, you know th therefore the lol is keep uh, keeps on increasing and it keeps increasing you know 0 0.1506 the threshold and therefore you add one more unit here and then it keeps increasing and then it becomes 0 0.1505 so then you add over here and then it keeps increasing and here it becomes 0 0.18 and therefore you add over here you know and then again uh, it, from 300 it becomes 350 from uh, here it becomes you know 250 it becomes 300 because you added one unit here you added one unit from 250 it becomes 300 from then here you added one unit you know here you added one unit and it becomes 0.08 uh, it becomes uh, 250 you know so this is the LOLE calculation so if I have to show this you know by way of graph so we kept on adding so uh, when you add for example over here then the when you added over here so when you get a peak load of 140 you add you know because the threshold is increasing so when you get 200 you add for example when you get 240 you add for example over here so you keep on increase uh, you keep on adding uh, units at different times you know so uh, because we know how the load profile is growing and therefore uh, we know that 10 percent it's increasing every year so we know also when to add these units you added one unit from 200 becomes 250 you added another unit it becomes 300 and then you added another unit it becomes 350 and you kept the risk level as 0.15 which is a management decision so that means you can decide when to add units and therefore you can plan in advance you can forecast a growth in the peak load and therefore you can plan when to add units what should be the capacity and of course the post outage rates the unavailability so for example in this particular case we decide to add units at uh, two uh, first in the second year then in the fourth year and then in the sixth year okay 
because uh, because that was a load profile. We assume that there is a 10% increase in load, peak load, and therefore the load profile has changed, which brings about a change in the LOLA, which is calculated based on the load profile and the COPT. And therefore, when the risk level increases beyond 0.15, then you keep adding. And then you calculate when does the when does it increase beyond one five how many years it takes to come to that point and therefore accordingly you decide when to add the units so this approach ensures that the stated reliability criteria is met so there can be other decision uh, factors you know costing and some other logistical issue and Okay, recall that uh, that we assume that we would solve our capacity problem by adding capacity at increments of 50 megawatt at time. It would be quite a typical if this were the only solution. For example, one might consider larger or smaller increment. It doesn't have to be necessarily 50 megawatt. It could be 20, 30, 40 megawatts, for example. And here we have assumed that the post outage rates are same but it could be different. You remember in one example, we assumed 2%, 4%, 6% outage rates and we calculated the LOLEs and so on. So here also we can do the similar thing. And so we have all these calculations at our disposal to make a good decision. Now, <clears throat> while we are at this, you know, we finished with those uh, long back the LO, uh, LOLP, LOLE and so on. Now uh, we come to this generic, uh, you know, calculations of uh, generic calculations uh, by merging the generation and the load levels. So uh, we assume that there is a peak load level. There is a, a peak load, but it doesn't last all day long and it can last only for some hours. And therefore the rest of the hours, there'll be a low load level and then there'll be a high load. Uh, during a certain part of the time. So, you know, when you are calculating, you need not have to consider, you know, when you are planning and comparing the facilities, it is okay to take peak load levels and lasting all day. But in reality, when you want to calculate the actual LOLP, LOLE and so on, then you need to take the actual load profile. So when you want to take the actual load profile, it doesn't last all day, you know, the peak load. So it's only there for a certain hours and it's not there in other times. So a certain percentage of it, you know, so E, if we refer it by this coefficient E and a fixed low load of one minus E, you know, E multiplied by the day or in terms of hours, the mean duration of the peak is described by the exposure factor. E is the exposure factor. That's the entire time divided by the exposure factor. D is the length of the load cycle one day in this application. So in one day, what is the exposure factor? You know, 50% of the time, 25% of the time, 0 0.25, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Whatever. So that's exposure level. The factor is considered to be the same for every day. You know, so this is one concession that we are making. Earlier we assumed that the peak load remains same all throughout. And we did all those calculations. You know, it may be good for trying to compare facilities, and trying to and trying to compare facilities and so on. But when you have to actually do the commercial calculations and, you know, uh, the costing, etc., you need to take into account these actual load variations. And therefore, every peak load is invariably followed by a low load. Each peak load returns to the low load level each day before transferring to another peak day on the same day. So uh, when E is equal to one, the load is represented by its daily peak level value as in the conventional approach. So the value of E, we are considering it the same all the time. So this is one concession. So instead of having that regular load profile, so because 
you know, the regular load profile that we had seen earlier, because we considered some peak load, etc. Now, the on a daily basis, the load levels can change, but the exposure factor can remain same. Exposure factor can remain same. So it can go from a low load to a high load, you know, and then to another high load level, then to another high load level, and to another high load. Okay. So this obviously is the transition rate. You know, we are aware of the role that transition rates play in these models because of the calculations that we require. And therefore, you know, let's assume that these calculations to a higher load state is alpha one LO plus, alpha two LO plus, you know, from uh, LO to L2, then LO to L3, alpha three, LO plus, you know, you want to make some distinction between these load levels. So we use alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and alpha I. So, and then return back, you know, the transition rate from the high load to the low load. So this is the load profile in terms of the state space model. Now, uh, these can look quite confusing, but as in the previous case, don't get bogged by it. The, what is important here is to know that uh, there is no upward load departure rate from low load level. Is, uh, there is no uh, upward departure rate from high load level. So if it is lambda plus, you are uh, looking for some from peak load, there is no further uh, higher load, you know, from this, there is no higher load, from this, there is no transition to another higher load, from this, there is no transition to higher load, from this, there is no transition to higher load. So these transition rates, what we are mentioning is uh, from peak load to uh, trans uh, this uh, forward, trans uh, forward transition, you know, higher transition is not there. To the lower one, it is there. For the moment, just you know, remember that it's one upon one minus E. Because the peak load lasts for an exposure ratio of E, therefore the low load lasts for one minus E. And therefore the transition rate is one upon one minus E. There is some little bit of mathematics, but you can figure it out logically. So, uh, Upward load departure rate from low load is one upon one minus T. E. Okay, so from peak load, upward load departure is zero. From low load, it is one upon one minus T. E. Then downward load departure rate from peak load, you know, from peak load to low load is uh, uh, L1 to L0 or L2 to L0 or L3 to L0. That's lambda. L minus one, lambda L minus two, lambda L minus two. So that's, you know, one upon E. So these are the important things to remember. One is that the upward uh, departure from peak load is zero. Then uh, upward departure from low load is one upon one minus E. Downward load departure from peak load is one upon E. Okay, the rest of the things, you don't have to worry. The combination of discrete levels of available capacity and discrete levels of system load create a, create a set of discrete capacity margin states. So you have capacity states and you have load states. Okay, so the difference is the margin. Margin could be positive, could be negative. You know, if it is negative, it represents a failed state. If it is positive, it represents a success state. So you have what is also called a margin state. You have capacity state, load states. You know, this is a load state model, load state model. And you already know the capacity state models. You know, you have seen those Marco models which we discussed uh, yesterday. So those were for the capacity states. And then you have the load state model and you have the capacity state model. And 
because we are worried about success and failure therefore we think of the margin whether if the margin is positive it's a success state the margin is negative it's a fail state therefore let's define a margin state which is a combination of the capacity state cj and the load state li okay so capacity cj and load li peak load it could be low load it could be high it could be one of these loads you know it doesn't have to be uh, one specific uh, load like we have uh, seen in the previous examples it could be a very you know l1 l2 l3 l4 anything so uh, the difference between the two is known as the margin state okay so just as you had uh, transition rates from various load states transition rates from capacity states you know load states and capacity state we discussed about this transition rates you know we said that uh, from peak load to a uh, higher load uh, departure it's zero then uh, from low load to a uh, upward departure it's 1 upon 1 minus e then from peak load to downward departure it's 1 upon e okay then downward departure from low load is zero from low load nothing can be lower so that's it so these are some of the things which we need to remember and which is not very difficult to know and probability of low load level you know probability of low load level so this is e d0 and the remaining is 1 minus e okay so this is d so probability of low load level is obviously uh, 1 minus e the exposure is 0.2 then low load is 0.8 isn't it 80% so so you have margin states capacity minus load these are margin states and we need to find out what are those transitions from these various margin states so you can have transitions to upward margin and transitions to lower margin lower margin can even be zero no margin or it could be negative so lower margins can be negative and then you have transitions to higher margin states so you have uh, so higher margin means you know without get, getting much into the uh, mathematics you you should know that higher margin would imply a higher capacity state and lower uh, and lower load state higher capacity lower load mean positive margin simple logic and uh, low uh, negative margin state means lower capacity lower capacity state and higher load state lower capacity and higher load state would mean negative margin state okay and so we have been able to find out these transitions from the margin state to higher margin states and lower margin states what about the probabilities state probabilities of those margin states you know that's simple that's trying to multiply the two probabilities the probability of those state capacities and probability of the load what about the frequency frequency is nothing but the take the probability of the margin state which we have just calculated and then multiply it by you remember we have discussed about frequency you sum the transitions or the departures from that state probability multiplied by the sum of the departures from that state is the, the frequency of the margin so that's uh, lambda plus m plus lambda minus n so this is the frequency this is the probability and these are the transitions to higher margin and lower margin why are we calculating margin because now you know the load profile that means the peak day doesn't last all day long earlier cases we have only considered peak day lasting all day long you know but peak load the peak load doesn't have to last all day long it can have a exposure ratio exposure ratio uh, meant uh, defined by e and so for the rest of the time it's low load and only for that exposure period it's high load so when you have such a situation how do you calculate the frequency of failures or lolp lole and so on and everything you know loss of load probability 
uh, what is the probability of failure and so on. So we need to uh, develop these uh, merge these load and generation model. And therefore, we define these margin states. Margin state is generation minus the load. And therefore, departures uh, to higher states and departure to lower states and the state probabilities and the frequency. And what is the mean duration of system failure? How long will this last? For example, how long will there be failure? You know, these are very important for calculations. How long they can be a failure? So failure states you can define, and therefore there will be a number of states which will be failure. You combine them and you get the probability. And likewise, you get the frequency, and then you can find out what is the mean duration of system failure. So let's make it more, uh, uh, you know, more example oriented, so that you get a feel of it. So let's uh, consider some simple examples. Consider a two level load model with a load level of zero. Let's say zero megawatt is a load level, two load level, a higher load level and a lower load level. Peak loads Li are distributed according to their respective relative frequencies as given. 10% of the days a peak load of 100 is expected in 20%, 120, 50%, 140, remaining 20%, 150. Assume an exposure factor of 0.5. That means the peak load doesn't last all day long. It's just half the period and the remaining half. So this is a practical situation, you know. So earlier we were considering those kind of situations which were really not practical, but they would be good to compare facilities and to do some comparative analysis and so on. But when you want to get down to the brass tacks and calculate the values, you know, for your uh, commercial purposes, you need to figure out what is the actual load profile and then uh, do these calculations or at least make it more realistic than what we have been able to do earlier. So we consider uh, exposure ratio of 0.5 in this case. So let's say that there is a generation system consisting of four identical 50 megawatt unit, each unit having a failure rate of 0.4 and a repair rate of 9.6. You know, this is the same example we have been using all the time because the COPT is available, the calculations are available, and therefore we need not have to repeat all these calculations again. So the load profile is given, the generation profile is given. You know, we have taken these kind of examples earlier, 10%, 20%, 50%, 20%. You know, we have taken example earlier, but how is this example different? Because it assumes an exposure factor. Earlier, there was no exposure factor. So now we have introduced this because this is the practical reality. And therefore, we have introduced this and we want to see how the probability of failure, etc. change. And now this is what we already know you know, by way of COPT and we have calculated and we have used this uh, example of 50 megawatt four identical and then failure rate and repair rate, we have used this. Combine the identical margin states and obtain the probabilities, cumulative probabilities, cumulative frequencies, hence obtain the system failure probability and frequency. This is the bottom line. We need to find out what is the system failure problem. This is a load profile, this is the generation profile, and this is what is required. System failure probability and frequency. So let's go to the load model first, okay? We have seen that the load is 100, 120, 140, 150. So what is the percentage of time? 10%, 20%, 50%, 20%. So that's 10%, 20%, 50%, and 20%. That's alpha. Okay. And then you remember we uh, we also mentioned about uh, just a second. Hello. Uh, 
Okay, so we have uh, mentioned about this in the uh, probability of, for example, getting the low load, you know, the exposure is for the higher uh, load. You remember the peak load, daily load variation, the peak load E. So the probability of getting a lower load is one minus E, you know, probability. 50% time you get the higher load. So 50% time you get the lower load. You remember, E was 0.5, means what is the percentage of time for which you get the higher load? So that was exposure ratio, we assumed 0.5. So it's 0.5, you know, the probability of this load, zero. What about 100? So if it is, uh, you know, so that's alpha into E, that's the generic formula, you know, because 100 also doesn't last, uh, 100 is only how much? 1% of the time, you know, 100 is 10% of the times. So 10 into 0 0.5, 10%, you know, because the low load is always there. So it's not a question of percentage, but 100 is only 10%, you remember? 100 is only 10% of the days. 10, 100 plus 100 peak load, 100 megawatt peak load is only 10% of the days. So alpha gets multiplied by E, so it gets uh, peak load, you know. Now this, this was one minus E, this is E, that's the peak load exposure, multiplied by alpha, you get 0 0.05. Then you multiply 0 0.2 into 0 0.5, you get 0.1. Then 0.5 into 0.2. Uh, 0 0.5 into 0.5, so 0 0.25, and then you get 0 0.5 into 0 0.2, that's 0 0.1. Okay, so these are the probabilities of these loads. The probability of 0, probability of 100, state probabilities. State probability of 120, mega, 120 megawatt, 140, 150. Now, what about transitions to lower and higher state? You know, you remember we had mentioned about uh, transition to a higher state, 1 upon 1 minus E. From 0, there is no transition to a, a lower state. From 0, there is no transition to a lower state, that's 0. And 1 minus E is the period for which the low load lasts, you know, 1 minus E. E is the period for which the high load lasts. Therefore, 1 upon 1 minus E is the uh, transition rate to uh, in transition rate to a higher state, so that's two. From 100, from zero, it can go to 100 or 120, 140, 150, and therefore that uh, transition rate is two. From 100, there is no transition to higher, you remember? So this is zero, this is 100, 120, 140, 150. From 100, there is no transition. This is the peak. Either it could be this or it could be this. So 120, there is no transition to higher. There is transition to lower, but there is no transition to higher. Okay. So likewise for 140, 150 and so on. So this is all zero. This is all zero. And in the low load case, there was no transition to a lower state, just as in the high low, high uh, peak load case, there is no transition to higher. So also in low load case, there is no transition to lower. And then transition from the high load to the low load, that is, you know, high load to the low load. So the peak load lasts for 50% uh, of the time or the exposure ratio. So the transition rate is one upon E. For each of them, it's same because in each case it uh, goes back to from L it would go back to L zero from L two it would go back to L zero L three it would go back to L zero so that's the transition to lower state. Okay, so this is the load model. This is the load model with which we have to work. Now let's represent it by Markov models. No, so L0 to L1, L0 to L2, L0 to L3, L0 to 
L4. So what about the transition rates L0 to L1? L0 to L1, that means uh, L0 to L1. L0 to L1. Okay, that's uh, yeah. From L0, L0 to L1. That's uh, 0.2, that's 0.4, and that's uh, 1, and that's uh, 4. So that is these calculations that we have. You remember how did we obtain these uh, transitions from L0 to L1, L2, and L3, and L4. So we have L0 and transitions uh, to a higher state was, uh, you remember, you go back to this calculation. Yeah. You have higher state alpha 1, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, you know, so multiplication. So you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, you know, these are the multiplications. I'll get back to this. I'll get back to you on this. But I think uh, you recall uh, very clearly that the transitions to lower state is uh, the transition to lower state from L0 is 0, from L1 it is uh, 2, from L2 it is 2. You know, the transitions from these various states it's 2. And uh, so this is also 2. Now, what we need to know is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 1, and 0 0.4. Okay, so uh, what we have done is we have basically multiplied, uh, we have basically uh, multiplied them. Let's look at the, transition upward load departure rate for low load. Upward uh, load departure rate for low load is one upon one minus E. So one upon one minus E in this case is two. You remember? So uh, that's uh, that's two. That's what we have done. And then for the Upward low departure for peak load is zero. Upward uh, downward low departure for peak load is one upon E. Downward peak load for departure is one upon E. So E is 0.5. So this actually becomes two, but it gets multiplied by these alphas. You know, this gets multiplied because this lasts for point 0.1. So one upon E multiplied by alpha. 1 upon E multiplied by alpha. So 1 upon E is 2 multiplied by alpha, that's 0.2. And then uh, 1 upon E is 2 multiplied by alpha, that's 0.4. 1 upon E is 2 multiplied by 0.5, so that's 1. 1 upon uh, E, that's 0.5. Uh, 1 upon E, uh, that's 2 multiplied by 0.2, so 0.4. So this is 1 upon E, you know, from low load to uh, upward transition from low load. And because alpha is not one, therefore it becomes alpha multiplied by one upon E. So these are the transitions to uh, higher load states and transitions from the higher load to the lower load is always one upon E. Now let's look at the generation model. So generation model, we have been able to calculate the forced outage rate, the unavailability is 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 4%. And the load transition rates are in per day units. Generation transition rates must also be in per day units. Okay, so 0 0.04, uh, because the load is in per day unit, that's what we have seen earlier, you know, per day, 10% of the day, uh, 
20% of the days, 50% of the days, 140% of the day, uh, 140 megawatt, or remaining 20% of the days, and so on. So anyway, this is calculated uh, in terms of uh, per day. So lambda and mu. And then we have this capacity outage quality table uh, converted in terms of the state space model. So from C0, that means all the generators are working. How many of them are there? Four of them are working. So uh, it can go to a state in which one of them could fail. So that's four lambda. So 0.00114. So that's 0.044. So then it could go into a state in which uh, this is uh, four are working. Any four of the four, four, any any of the four could fail. It would go into a state in which three are working, and then it could go in. Any of the three could fail, and it could go into a state in which two are working. And then from here, any two could fail and it could go into a state in which one is working. And then that could fail and it could go into a state in which none of them is working. So any of the four could fail, four lambda. Any of the three could fail, three lambda. Any of the two could fail, two lambda. Any of the, I mean, just the one which is there could fail, that's one lambda. And here one of them has failed, so it could get repaired. It could get, uh, no, here none of them are working. None of them are working. So any of the four could get repaired. So that's four mu. So four times this. Then here three are working. Any of the three, uh, three are failed. So any of the three could get repaired. So three mu. Here two are working, two are not working. So any of the two could get repaired. So two mu. And uh, here, uh, all four are, uh, I mean, like uh, three are working and one is failed. So that failed one could get repaired and that's me. So 0 0.0263. So four could get repaired, three could get repaired, two could get repaired, one could get repaired. Any of the four could fail, any of the three could fail, any of the two could fail, any other one could fail. So that's the state space for the generation that was the this is the state space model for the load so you have load and generation now you want to merge them so and copt for the generation you know to uh, the capacity in could be from 0 to 200 one of them working two of them working three of them working four of them working and you can calculate the probabilities and from 200 to higher state, zero. There is no higher state. 200 to a lower state, 200. This is the 200. Uh, this is the 200 state. Okay. This is 150. This is 100. This is 50, and this is zero. So 200 to a higher state, none. 200 to a lower state is 0 0.0044. So to a higher state, none. To a lower state is 0 0.0044. Then from 150, this is 150, to a higher state, that means 0 0.0263. And to a lower state, and to a lower state means 0 0.0033. So repair to a higher state and then to a lower state. Likewise, for 100, you know, this is 100. So to a higher state is 0 0.0526. To a lower state is 0 0.022. Okay. So likewise for 50 and likewise for 0. For 0, there is nothing lower to a lower state, you know. So, but there is to a higher state. From This is 0. So to a higher state is 0 0.1052. There is nothing to a lower state than 0. So that's to a higher state. So this is the uh, capacity outage quality table for the generation. This was the uh, load model, load model. This is the generation model. Now we need to combine these two, okay? So when we want to combine them, 
then what are the combinations let's look at either you could be a state in which you are in state 0 0 means 0 units up that means 200 megawatt so you could be in a state of 200 megawatt but you could encounter a load of l0 or you could encounter a load of l1 or you could encounter a load of l2 or you could encounter a load of l3 or l4 you remember so you have l0 l1 l2 l3 l4 okay so these correspond to different loads remember 100 120 140 150 and of course zero low load level is zero so you have capacity zero uh, zero unit out that's 200 so 200 with l0 200 uh, megawatt with l1 l2 l3 l4 likewise you could have a capacity of c1 with l0 l1 l2 l3 l4 you could have c2 with l0 l1 l2 l3 l4 then you have c3 with l0 l1 l2 l3 l4 then you have c4 with l0 l1 l2 l3 l4 okay so these are the various combinations and uh, if this is C0 and this is all L0, L1, L2, L3, L4. So these are the transition rates you know, from L0 to L1. These are all C0, so it doesn't really change that. So uh, the transitions are, you know, to higher state and to lower state are given by what is uh, what is written there. You see, so 0 0.2, 2, 2, and 0.4, and 1, and 0.4. This is the same thing we had earlier. And check. Okay, 0 0.4, 1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 1, and 0 0.4. So that's the same thing in all of them. Okay, so because that's the load profile. So C0 in combination with the various loads, C1 in combination with the various loads, C2 in combination with the various loads, C3 in combination with the various loads, C4 in combination with the various loads. Why are we doing this? Because we want to find out the margin. Margin between C0, L0, C0, L1, C0, L2, C0, L3, C0, L4. So various uh, generation states, various load states. So what are the margin states? So all combinations have been represented here. Now let's look at the transitions between the generating states. Okay, so C0 to C1, C1 to C2, C2 to C3, C3 to C4, you see, C0 to C1, C1 to C2, C, C2 to C3, C3 to C4, you see, so C0, to C1, 0 0.044, 0 0.033, 0 0.022, 0 0.011, and then of course the reversal. Okay, the repair rates. So 0 0.1052, 0 0.0789, 0 0.0526, and 0 0.0263. So you can see. 0 0.0263, 0 0.0526, 0 0.0789, and 0 0.1052. So all the transition rates have been also represented in this margin state. Okay, this is the these are the margin states. So let's see which of them is a positive margin, which one of them is a negative margin. Why are we interested in knowing which is a positive margin, which is a negative margin? Because negative margin means the generation is not able to meet the load and therefore it's a failed state. So we identify those negative margin states and find out their state probabilities. If we know their state probabilities, then we can sum the total probability of those individual negative margin states and that gives you the system failure probability. That gives you the system failure probability so let's say you know let's take them one by one so for example c0 l0 margin state 
So capacity is C0 minus L0. This is generation and this is load. L0 is low, low load. So in this case, C0 is 200, zero units out. So that's 200. Low load is zero. So the, so the margin is 200 mega. Margin. Okay. Now, what is the, uh, what is the uh, probability of this margin? We are denoting this margin state as 0, 0. That means capacity C0 and L0. M0, 0, in this case, refers to 200 mega. So the probability of getting this, the probabilities get multiplied. Although the capacity, the margin means difference, but the probabilities get multiplied. So probability of this multiplied by the probability of this. So probability of uh, getting 200 megawatt multiplied by the probability of getting the low load. That's 0.5 low load. You see, probability is 0.5. And C0, what is the probability? You know, C0, number of units out, zero. So probability is 0 0.8493466. So probability of uh, being in a uh, capacity state where zero units are out multiplied by the load probability. So you get this uh, probability of this margin state zero, zero. Next is to find out what is the departure to a higher state and departure to a lower state. Departure to a higher state, is there, could there be a more, uh, uh, could there be a higher difference margin state? Here the maximum generation and the lowest load. So there is no higher margin than 200. Okay, so that's zero. And could there be a lower margin? Yes, there'll be a lower, lower margin. And I had told you about, uh, you know, how to calculate uh, these uh, positive uh, departure rates and negative departure rates, you know. The positive I had said, higher generation, lower load. And uh, negative margin, lower generation, higher load. You know, this is one easy way to remember. Negative margin, lower uh, generation, higher load. plus and here minus. So lambda C0 minus C0 and lambda plus L0. So lambda plus L0 is lambda plus L0, you know, is two and and uh, uh, you know, uh, this was, which is the one? which we are looking at, yeah. So this is lambda minus C0. So lambda minus C0 is 0 0.0044, okay? So 0 0.0044 plus two. So that's the negative margin transition, 2.0044. Important and key thing is to remember these expression. To positive margin means positive, um, then higher generation state, lower load state. Then uh, negative margin state means lower generation state, higher load state. So if you take uh, for this combination, zero, zero, okay, then you get these uh, rates and you add them up as in this expression. And then you get the Departures to a higher margin state is zero. Departure to a lower margin state is 2.004. So let's take another example, C0L1. We were at C0L0. So we have calculated the probability of this state and we have calculated the departure to a higher state, departure to a lower state. Let's take this combination C0L1. C0 is 200. Now, uh, L1, what is L1? C0, L0, we have already calculated. Now, C0, L1, L1 is not 100. This is a type. L1 is not 100. L1 is not zero. See, L1 is, L1 is 100. So this is not, uh, 
this is not uh, correct. So this is 100 and this should be 100 million. 100. Okay, this is 100. C0 is 200, this is 100. L1 is 100. So this should be 100 million. Now that's uh, the notation of uh, this margin state is capacity is 0, load is 1. So uh, L1. So the margin state notation is M01. 0 and 1. You know, so what about the probability, probability of uh, uh, capacity C0 and probability of L1? So C0 probability here also we have used, you see, that same everywhere. And then probability of L1. Probability of L1, that's 0.5. Not 0.5, it's 0 0.05. 0 0.05, sorry. 0 0.05. Okay, probability of L1. This is L1 is 100, probability is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 multiplied by the probability of this capacity state will give you the state probability of this margin state at 0, 01. What about departure rates? Positive margin, uh, uh, positive uh, margins, uh, uh, you know, uh, departure. So higher capacity, lower load. So from departure from all these higher loads, peak loads is zero, upward departure, you know, and to a lower departure, you remember, uh, it's two. To a lower departure, it's two. So in this case, it's uh, departure rate from zero is capacity C0, C0, and uh, departure rate to a uh, departure, negative departure rate from L1. So L1 uh, and C0. Okay, so here it's two, here it's two. So lambda L1 uh, is two minus, and then capacity C0. C0 is this, you know, we already know it. And uh, then departure to a higher capacity state is zero. Now because that's uh, 200 megawatt, so this is zero, this is two. Then uh, negative uh, lower state, M01, you know, departure uh, negative uh, transition from uh, state 01, margin state 01. So that's lower generation, higher load. So lower generation means negative lambda minus C. So that's uh, 0 0.0044. Okay. And uh, there is no uh, positive uh, departure transition rate from a peak load. So that's it. So this comes to 0 0.0044. Let's do one or two more and then we'll go over to the So that you get a hang of it. It's a bit confusing because you need to keep always referring to the table and then keep checking and everything. So it can become a bit messy, but it's not really that messy if you uh, if you are careful and you know you are not in a great hurry. So let's look at the other margin state. So we have looked at C0, L0, C0, L1. Let's look at C0, L2. C0, L2. Capacity is uh, 200, L1 was 100, you remember, L2 is 120. So that's an 80 megawatt capacity. And what is the probability? Probability of being in this capacity and probability of this load. So you refer to those two tables and you get these probabilities. So probability of uh, C0, that's 200. 
you know this is the priority and then priority of uh, lt is point 1 This is C0, L0, C2, L2, yeah, point 0.1. So this is priority of C0 and this is priority of L1, L2. So you get this uh, probability for the margin state 0, 2, 0 refers, this notation refers to uh, C0 state and L2 state. So this is the probability for this margin state 0, 2. Then what about the positive transition from this is not M01, it's M02. There are, so, there are uh, some typos which uh, should be corrected, but this is lambda plus M02. So that's uh, higher uh, capacity state and lower load state. So this is L2 minus L2. So lambda plus C0 you know, you have to refer back to again those tables. But sometimes in this case, it's easy because there is no transition to a higher state, you know, from C0. C0 is 200 megawatt state, so that's zero. And uh, then uh, lambda minus L2, you can refer, you know. That means transition from, transition from, uh, transition from L2, that would be L2 to L0. There is no higher transition from L2, L1, L3, because they are the peak loads. And they are transitions only to a lower load, which is the low load, which is, and that transition is invariably zero. No, lower load, the transition Uh, no transition to a higher load, that's zero. And uh, transition to a lower load, that's all two. You see, that's all two. Transition to a lower load from L1, that's two. From L2 also, it's two. From L3 also, it's two. From L4 also, two. No transition to higher load state from L1, L2, L3, L4. So some things we can remember and then just plug it. But some things probably you need to go back and check. So, yeah, C0, L2. Uh, so, this is zero, nothing to higher capacity. And then to the lower load from the peak load is always two in this case. So, lambda plus MO1 is two and then lambda minus MO2, that means to a negative margin state. Lower capacity, higher load. So lambda minus C0, you know, that means yeah. See, you, you can see here, what was that? We are looking for C0 and L2. So lambda minus C0 and lambda plus L2. So lambda minus C0. C0, lambda minus is 0 0.0044 and lambda minus L2. Lambda minus L2 is 2. So we have these numbers. Lambda plus, we went on and checked lambda minus, but let's see 